Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm really glad you're here tonight on Giving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday night. So you're giving yourself the gift of Connect to Comprehension information. Um, my name is Lynn Givens. I'm the developer of this program. I wish I could fix this camera so that I'm not staring up at the ceiling. Oh, well. OK. Um, I've been a teacher of struggling readers and their teachers for over 40 years. Uh, I started out as a special ed teacher and have played many roles. I was trained in Orton Gillingham at the Skank School in Atlanta with Dr. Marge Tillman. And from there, uh, I went to um, the Florida Center for Reading Research in Tallahassee and was trained there by my wonderful mentor, Dr. Joseph Torgerson. And I was the director of intervention uh, at FCRR. Um, I've also been a professor of reading at Florida State University, where I taught all of the foundational reading courses. And we also did a practicum for struggling readers where we used Connect to Comprehension. So we have some data from that on the website, and you can go to research on the website and take a look at that. I'm going to give you the links to the program, to the website, and to several other places that you can go uh, when we finish the presentation. Um, but what I'll do is when I finish, I'll take a look at the questions that you've either posted on chat or taken, you can either post as you're thinking of them, or you can um, take notes and post them at the end of the presentation and we'll take your questions one by one. Please feel free to email me. I'd love to have conversations with you about this program. There are so many things that we can talk about and we can go into an in-depth presentation, uh, in-depth discussion. Um, what I'm going to do is just do a brief presentation of the program, and then we'll have lots of time for you to ask questions at the end. So let's talk about Connect to Comprehension. What is Connect to Comprehension? Yes, this is a scripted program. Every lesson is scripted. Everything you need to know is scripted. The unique thing is that it connects all components of reading, phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, comprehension, all in one place. Orton Gillingham based, although it's not an Orton Gillingham program. And here's the most important thing that the program focuses on upper level comprehension skills like cause and effect, like compare and contrast, like making inferences. And because of the decodable readers that we use and because of the way the program is scripted, you can do this even with students who are struggling to read. So even students who are reading CVC words are severely struggling readers can learn how to uh, how to make these connections that are upper level comprehension. So that makes this very unique. And we'll talk about the idea of climbing two mountains in a few minutes. But if you go to the website, to the Connect to Comprehension website, you can see a list of these comprehension skills that are covered. And it is a very lengthy list. And remember, this runs all the way through the program. So there are six levels of the program. Level A begins with CVC words. Level B with long vowel teams and VCE words and so on until you get to level F, which is um, syllabication types and division rules for reading multisyllabic words. OK, each level is paired with six decodable readers and you get these readers when you purchase a kit so level a has six decodable readers level b six decodable readers six readers with each level of the program here's an important part of the program it's skill based it's not grade level based and people always ask me one of the first questions i get is what age group is this for and it's for any age. I have used this with adult dyslexic students with very good results. I want to read you this quote 
from Louisa Motes because I think it really speaks to the importance of having this av available for older students. Here's what Louisa Motes says. Students cannot and should not bypass any critical skills necessary for fluent and meaningful reading just because of their chronological age. So older students who are struggling need these foundational skills. It's not just our younger struggling readers. Okay, we can implement Connect to Comprehension one-on-one -on -one in a tutoring situation, in a classroom situation. We can use it in small intervention groups, and this is being done throughout the country, and it can be used in an intervention classroom. And if you're interested in, in implementing this in an intervention classroom, um, in the implementation guide, which you get along with the program, you will see a description of how to do this along with a chart so that you can do rotations with students in an intervention classroom. Okay, the lessons are multi-sensory, lots of games, lots of lessons that students find engaging and motivating. So this is not a dry program where students are bored. I've never ha had anyone tell me, oh my gosh, my students are really bored with Connect to Comprehension. No, they are not. They are excited to learn. They are motivated and they are engaged. And that's because of the way the lessons are set up with lots of interactive activities and lots of games. So students feel successful uh, while they are engaged and motivated. Okay, so what does this Connect to Comprehension kit, when you get a kit, what does it include? Well, um, you get teacher's guides for all six levels that outline every single lesson with explicit language for teaching and reviewing. Okay, so there are six levels. You get six teacher's guides. You also get an implementation guide that I mentioned before, which shows you how to set up a daily routine, how to manage an intervention classroom. And in the imp implementation guide are all the assessments that you will need for pre and post testing, for placement in the program, for progress monitoring, which is really important. You don't have to go somewhere else to do progress monitoring. All the progress monitoring measures are right there. And you also have outcome measures. In addition, you get what my students at FSU called the fun box or the box of fun. You get a box of fluency strips and sequencing strips, and we'll talk more about the fluency strips in a few minutes, that you can use for interactive practice. The fluency strips promote reading in meaningful phrases. The sequencing strips, of course, are for sequencing the events in the story. There are also optional beginning, middle, and ending strips that you can use to help students with that skill. Um, in the program, separate from the decodable readers are decodable informational text passages. And we know that all students, even our struggling readers, need to be able to read informational text as well as narrative text. So these passages are included in the program and they are paired um, with the narrative text because the research shows that when you pair informational and narrative text, students have the background knowledge they need through reading the narrative text to read the informational text. And it helps, they know the vocabulary and they're comfortable with the topic so that when you go to informational text passages, they've already climbed that mountain. So that decodable informational passages are also included. For example, in level C, uh, there is a book called A Brave Act, and it's about a young man who saves a family from a fire. And after students read that narrative text, it's a story, they then read a decodable informational text 
called How to Stay Safe from a Fire. So by pairing these, we get a lot of bang for our bucks. Okay, still continuing with what's in the kit separately, although it's not part of the kit, but you get this separately, you get a set of the 36 High Noon Sound Out chapter books. So these represent the teacher sets of materials that you're going to use. If you need extra um, chapter books, you can order those directly from High Noon, but I provide you with the teacher set of those materials. Why is this a unique program? And it really is unique. It's different from anything else you're gonna see out in the marketplace. And the biggest reason is because, as I said before, all reading components are taught at the same time. So you don't have to climb the decoding mountain. And when you get to the top, when students are able to read the words, then you're gonna start teaching comprehension. That's not a very effective way to go. But if you have a program that teaches comprehension skills while students are learning to decode and practicing those decoding skills in a sequential manner, then you get to the top of both of those mountains at the same time. Okay, so let's talk about all of the components and what Connect to Comprehension does to provide instruction and practice in those components. For phonemic awareness, every level in the teacher's manual, there is an introduction. And the introduction provides you with the foundational skills in phonemic awareness that you need in the targeted patterns. So in level A, when we're working with CVC words, um, the phonemic awareness activities will be blending, segmenting, and doing phoneme graphing mapping with, guess what, CVC words, okay? The same thing happens in level B as we move up the phonics ladder and we're working with VCE words and uh, long vowel teams. The phonemic awareness activities will involve blending and segmenting as well as phoneme graphing mapping with those patterns. Phoneme graphing mapping is so important because it takes students from working with sounds and being able to manipulate the sounds to adding letters for, to, for those sounds. So it's a really good bridge between phonemic awareness and phonics. Phonics and decoding, the, in, the um, instruction and practice is accomplished through the use of the high noon decodable readers, but we build accuracy and automaticity at the word, phrase, and sentence level. And this is so important. Um, I heard Dr. Torgerson speak at an International Dyslexia Association conference quite a few years ago, and he made this point uh, really strongly that we can't expect students to read text, even decodable text, until we work with decoding at the word level and then the phrase level, and then finally the sentence level. So that's what Connect to Comprehension does. We work with automaticity and accuracy at the word level using the skill deck. So you make a deck with all of the words that have the patterns that are targeted at that level, and you play games and do interactive activities with those words. And that's what happens at the word level. At the phrase level, we use fluency phrases, and that's your box of fun, so that we're building from the word level to the phrase level. And then finally, at the sentence level, we're using the decodable readers. But we do all of these other activities first so that students know what to do when they get to the decodable readers. And again, the activities are multi-sensory um, so that students are uh, writing, they're reading, they're moving, they're using their hands, um, doing lots of activities, they're moving magnetic letters, and doing lots of activities that help them. We know that multisensory activities are so important. Have you tried Slingerland training? Yes, 
Sarah, and wait until you see what I do with the fluency phrases taken directly from the idea of Slingerland. So yes, I am familiar with Slingerland and I did some initial training many years ago. Okay, so let's talk about, again, about the five components of reading and how they're all taught. Um, we build fluency again at the word, phrase, and sentence, and sentence level before we get to the text. Um, if you want to look at a great routine of how to teach the fluency strips, there is a great video of a teacher doing exactly that, following the scripted manual, using the fluency strips on the YouTube channel. And you'll have a link to that at the end of this presentation. But if you go to YouTube and type in Connect to Comprehension, you'll get there and you'll see lots of good things. But if you're interested in the fluency routine, you'll be able to see that there. Um, for comprehension, again, we're stressing upper level comprehension skills, but we do the lower level skills as well. So we talk about characters, we talk about events, we talk about settings, um, as well as upper level skills such as inferencing. And we build these skills sequentially, starting at level A and going all the way through to level F. And the types of activities that we're doing get more and more complex as we move through the levels. Uh, one other unique thing about, about the comprehension part is that every chapter has questions that students need to answer. They answer some orally and they answer some in written form. The questions that they answer in written form have sentence frames so that there is lots of scaffolding going on. The questions that they answer orally also include scaffolding. So if you're asking a question that's up here and difficult for some students, underneath that question are other questions in bold that you can use to scaffold so that students can then get up to that upper level skill. In every chapter, there is oral and written questioning because we know that some of our struggling readers who get to the point where they can answer orally still have difficulty writing the answers to questions. So we spend a lot of time working on answering questions in complete sentences. Vocabulary is such an important part of Connect to Comprehension because we know that our struggling readers often have depressed vocabulary. Why is that? Well, it's because they don't read a lot because reading is not fun and it's hard to do. When they do read, they read simpler text. So they don't have access to the types of vocabulary that we would expect they would know. So a big focus, as I said, of Connect to Comprehension is on vocabulary. There are wonderful tier two words, those words that appear often in text um, in the high noon readers. And we do a practice using the vocabulary deck. So the words that you're going to focus on are um, set up for you in the scripted lessons. You make a vocabulary deck for your students with student friendly definitions, but we don't just end with the vocabulary words and student friendly definitions. There are lots of activities using these words in various contexts. So we play games, um, we ask different kinds of questions, we work with multiple meaning words and use graphic organizers, lots of interactive activities with vocabulary. One of the favorite games of many students is the vocabulary game called Show Me, where students pick out a vocabulary word from the deck and do motions um, to uh, get the other students or to get you to guess what word. So kind of like charades, but again, that multi-sensory kind of activity. Um, so I've been through the components. Uh, if you will go onto the website, and I have the link there for you to go straight there, you can take a look at the daily lesson component chart. And this is really important because it lets you see all the components of a lesson and the lessons follow a routine. We know struggling readers really like routines and so do teachers. Um, 
and you'll be able to see the routine that goes through every lesson and in each part of the routine you'll see the components that are targeted so it's very easy to see when you look at that chart that all of the components are being taught and practiced okay um, aside from the five components of reading connect to comprehension also focuses on written expression very important all the way through reading and writing are consistently paired and dr tillman who was my mentor at the skank school said to me remember everything that students read they should also be able to write and everything that students write once it's corrected they should be able to read back so that reading writing connection is throughout everything that happens in connect to comprehension as i said there's scaffolding for answering questions in complete sentences and also scaffolding for answering oral questions another part of the written expression is that spelling rules like the doubling rule like the e dropping rule like the changing y to i rule all of those basic rules are taught in sequence as they occur in the high noon reader so when there is a high noon reader that has words like racing then we learn the e dropping rule when to drop an e and when to keep it and practice um, in dictated sentences and in lots of different ways i want to talk for just a minute about assessment so all the assessments that you need to get a really pretty good picture of where your student is in terms of skills is included in the implementation guide of the program. There are basically three assessments, a single word assessment, which has 100 words at um, increasingly difficult um, phonetic patterns. And you have the student read and do an error analysis so you know exactly what patterns a student is struggling with. There is a decodable passage assessment where the student reads a decodable passage at his instructional level. And then you ask 10 comprehension questions. One unique thing about this program is that the questions are always the same skills throughout all levels. So in level A, the first three questions are recall questions. The fourth question is a main idea and detail question. The fifth question is an inferencing question. And that same uh, sequence holds true across all the levels. So it's really easy to go back and say, okay, student had trouble with cause and effect here, but he got it later on. So we continue to work. And then when I asked him a cause and effect question in level B, he was able to answer it. The third assessment is an informal spelling inventory where you check to see if students are able to encode both the phonetic patterns and the spelling rules that we talked about so that you know where to start in terms of working with encoding. Is Connect to Comprehension evidence and research based? Yes, it is. Um, I have had lots of chance to read so many wonderful reading researchers, uh, Louisa Motes, Lene Airy, Dr. Torgerson, um, and incorporate all of those uh, important elements into this program. And you can see um, research uh, on the program in, on the website. If you'll click the research tab on the website, you'll be able to see both some of the research that is used and also some data that we've collected. So make sure that you visit the research section of um, the website. But here's the document that I used as sort of my guiding document when I made sure that everything was in place for this program. And the name of the document is Essential Reading Strategies for the Struggling Reader. It comes out of University of Texas with Sharon Vaughn, a wonderful researcher and practitioner, and her colleagues. And this is what they recommend. Uh, decodable books, yes, we have those, don't we? Decodable text, what does it do? It reinforces 
the, um, and transfers the reading of words with particular patterns from isolated cards to connected text. But if you look two more bullets down, they also recommend phrases for fluency. So we have the words, we have the phrases, and we have the connected text. And they're all focused on the same targeted patterns. Um, the folks at University of Texas also recommended frequent review of high frequency words. And there is a third deck that we use. We have a vocabulary deck. We have the skill deck. We also have a high frequency deck so that we can play games and do interactive activities for those high frequency words. The wonderful thing about the, another wonderful thing about the high noon books is that at the end of each book, there is a list of the high frequency words that are used in that book. So you can check to see which the students know and which they don't know and use that knowledge to make your high frequency deck. Continuing on with Sharon Vaughn and her colleagues, uh, they recommend pre-reading instruction as important for all students, but critical for those with reading difficulties and English language learners. Every lesson has before reading activities, and that's where we provide background knowledge, where we introduce new vocabulary words, where we recall um, important ideas from previous chapters, where we do predicting, um, where we do question generations, where students generate their own questions about what they're going to be reading. And then as they read, they answer those questions. So all of that happens in the before reading part of each lesson. Here's our decodable text again, recommended. Um, also, comprehension strategies. We can't assume that students just know how to how to understand cause and effect without specific modeling, discussing, and then checking for understanding. Buddy and partner reading is really important to uh, because we know it's one of the most effective ways to improve oral reading fluency. And so uh, once you read a chapter with, with a student or your students, it's great to have them go back and reread that chapter again. Don't have them read something that you haven't read with them, because that way you are just, uh, they can be practicing their mistakes. But buddy and partner reading is really important. Introduction and frequent practice of new vocabulary words. We do that with our vocabulary deck and with all of the activities that are involved with that. And here we go again, consistent pairing of reading and writing to reinforce the reading writing connection. So you're seeing some of these ideas come up over and over and over again. And that's important because these are not things that I just pulled out of the air to put into this program. Okay, so um, let's just talk a little bit about the program in general. It's been implemented since 2009. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, well, does anybody use this program? <laughs> yes, we're now in 29, uh, sorry, 39 states from uh, California to Florida to Maine. Uh, we're in 12 other countries. I just sent a kit yesterday to Australia. Um, yay, says Lisa, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, um, lots of other countries are using this program. And if you will go on both the website and the YouTube channel, you will see lots and lots of testimonials from parents, from teachers, from tutors, from administrators who have used the program in their schools and in their districts. So I hope that you'll do that. Here's my most favorite testimonial recently. And Faith, who's a reading interventionist, uh, wrote to me several weeks ago, the success I am seeing with this program is amazing. And that just makes my heart just, just feel like it's gonna burst out of my chest uh, because we really are changing students' lives. And so many of our struggling readers 
who are not involved in an effective program feel like they're not smart, they feel disheartened, they don't want to come to school, they certainly don't want to read. Uh, some of them sit there with their hoodies over their heads. It's very disheartening. So we can really make a difference with a program that works. Okay, now I'm going to take any questions that I have on chat. If you haven't posted any, please do that. And then I'm going to give you your bonus offer in the links. So let me look at chats. How long do you estimate the program takes? What a good question, Sheridan. Thank you. How often would you meet? Whoops, I just, okay. Um, how long does the program take? That really depends totally on your students. The lessons are meant to be about 45 minutes long if you do everything that's in the lesson, but they can take a lot less than that if you have students who um, have stronger decoding skills and you're really working more on comprehension, the decoding part would not take as long. I've also heard teachers say that um, they it takes them three days to get through a lesson because they're spending lots of time. Um, oh, wait a minute, I'm losing. Let me come back to the, I've got more questions than I can. Uh, wait just a minute. Okay, back to Sheridan's. Um, so how long, how often would you meet? Three to five times a week is most effective. I wouldn't do this one day a week or two days a week uh, because by the time you get back to meeting, you have to do so much review. Five days a week is wonderful. Three days a week works fine. Four days a week also fine. So 45 minutes if you've got 45 minutes. But the good thing about having this scripted program, Sheridan, is that you can stop wherever you need to stop. So you have 30 minutes and the 30 minutes is over and you haven't gotten through um, a lesson. You just put a pencil mark where you left off. You do a quick review when you get back together. Remember yesterday we did this, 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 and this, and then you continue on with the script. Okay, I hope that answers your question. If not, you can answer another one. I'm gonna go back up to the top now. Okay. Um, I've used it with uh, upper elementary age students and they are always engaged. Thank you, Nancy. If a person doesn't have a strong background for intervention, will this program be easy to implement and successful for teachers and students? Yes, Lisa, it will. Because of the scripted nature of the program, um, it's, it is very doable for people who don't have a strong background in reading. Now, of course, the more you know about reading, the better that will be for you and for your students. But it was meant to be scripted. When I first started uh, to, to put this program together and I went to Dr. Torgerson and said, if you were to tell me one thing to do, what would you say? And that's what he said, make it a scripted program so that you don't have to just use it with expert teachers. So yes, um, that actually does. So good question, thank you. Uh, let me scroll down. Have you taken Slinger Land training? Yes, <laughs> I have. Okay, uh, Nancy says that the YouTube videos are good and helpful, so please do, um, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and take a look. Have you used, Lynn wants to know, have you used this program with English language learners? Yes. In fact, I presented this in Bay County, Florida, uh, quite a few years ago to the, to the ELL director um, because she was thinking about using it with her newcomers club, you know, um, students who are just coming into the country. She was blown away by all of the supports there. And in fact, they do use this. And I have heard teachers say that this works really well with ELLs. Okay, Rosemary, what population do you see being used for? Um, I see the themes as being very mature. Um, I, I don't agree with you. I think most uh, kids understand 
uh, if you have the right kinds of questions and if you discuss it in a way that is age appropriate, that students can get this. I, I've just seen lots of success with first and second graders who, who get this. Now, most of those kids, if you're struggling in first and second grade, you're going to start probably with level A. And the themes in those first books in levels A and B are certainly accessible for those younger students. How long do you estimate? What level reading is level F? Okay, rather, Becky, rather than a grade level, let's talk about the skill level. And in level F, we're working with multisyllabic words. So if you want, there, so there's not um, a grade level per se, but rather a skill level. So you're testing your students. If you mean levels like Fontas and Pinnell levels, that, that has no, no levels. And some people ask that, how does this relate to Fontas and Pinnell? It doesn't at all. It's a totally different uh, animal. Um, but, but if you take a look at the scope and sequence chart that's on the website, you'll be able to see what skills are um, are targeted at each level, and that should help you. Okay, Sarah, what populations would you say this is most appropriate for? Well, that's such an interesting question, Sarah. Um, I wrote this as an intervention program. That was my goal, but it has sort of morphed into doing other things. There are several schools who use this as an alternate, they're charter schools, so they can kind of do what they want. Uh, it's just nice about charter schools. Um, they use it as an alternate core. And what I have heard from University Academy in Panama City is that if they start in grades K, one and two, using this as an alternate core, alternative core, that by the time students get to third grade, their decoding skills are intact, but they also have awesome comprehension skills. So um, it was meant to be strictly an intervention program for struggling readers who struggle with um, phonetic patterns, dyslexic students, and other struggling readers. Um, I hope that answers your question. It's really for any reader of any age who is struggling to read. That's my that's my best answer. It sounds like I'm hedging your question, but I'm really not. All right. Uh, is this program purely for schools or can it be taught home as well? Oh, yes, it certainly can. Um, quite a few of our C to Cers, as I call them, are homeschool, homeschooling parents. And because of the scripted nature of the program, they can do this and they do very well with it. Um, if you'll go on to the uh, website, you will hear from a parent who began using this with her son, with her older son. I think he was 10, 12, I don't remember. But um, he, uh, she just sang the praises of the program and how much it helped him. Okay, Sarah, does this program include note taking skills? No, that's, um, you'd have to go somewhere else for that. No note taking skills. There is some morphology in level E, we get into prefixes and suffixes and their meaning and we build words. Syntax comes as we answer the, um, the questions in with sentence frames. The grammar, no. Um, no. So there are things that we don't do, but remember, this is a program for struggling readers. Okay, does it employ varied practice, more or rereading? Oh, lots of varied practice for fluency, lots of things. We have the fluency phrases, we have lots of practice in ways to increase fluency. <laughs> Grandma, I got that. Okay, grammar. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep going if you all want to, our time is up, but I'll keep going as long as you have questions. Okay, does the program require student workbooks or materials? The, everything that you need is in the program. The only thing that it does require is that students have a journal, just a blank 
sheets of paper that they can use for their written parts of the program. And, and you need um, markers and those normal things. Every student needs a whiteboard. You need a set of uh, or more of um, magnetic letters so students get that multi-sensory practice. But no, there are no workbooks and other materials. You don't need anything else. Everything is in the kit. Okay, here's Sheridan again. Based on three days awake, would this take a year? Um, I, um, it just, I just can't, I don't feel comfortable answering that question because some students, yes, for some students, you could move through the program in a year if you saw them three days a week, but those would be students who are not struggling greatly. Um, I think more, it takes more like two years to get through the program. What interest level would a high schooler be engaged? Yes, even adults are engaged. Every book has a problem and a solution. I remember working with an adult dyslexic student. I was volunteering at a literacy center here in Tallahassee, and we were reading that brave act, that escape from a fire. And she was struggling, but uh, she got through it. And we got through to chapter, every uh, book has six chapters. We got to chapter four and our time was up. And she said, please, Lynn, can I stay and finish the book? I have got to find out if these people got out of the fire safely. So here was a very bright 28 year old woman um, who, um, who was engaged. Okay, if you are using this as an alternative core, would it take a school year for each level? Probably not. If you're using it as an alternative core, you're spending more time than you would be if you're using this as an intervention program. So I would say that you could get through several levels in one year. So the Connect to Comprehension link is here. The training is on the Center for Literacy Learning site on Teachable. In addition to virtual training, you will also find um, course modules on the components of reading. There's a module on eight essential comprehension strategies. There's a module on fluency to increase your understanding of fluency. There's a module on making vocabulary connections to take you beyond even what's done in Connect to Comprehension. And then again, on our YouTube channel, you can see testimonials, you can see brief sample lessons, and you can also see um, teacher conversations that I have had recently with uh, several teachers who talk about specifically how they have implemented Connect to Comprehension and the success that they have. So thank you so much for your time and attention. I'm so glad that you came. Uh, and joined us. And uh, again, I'll send you a copy of this. Please, lynn.givens at gmail.com. There I am, um, ready to talk to you anytime you have something that you want to talk about. Okay, let me get to the last chats. Uh, okay, I think these are thank you. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy doing this with you. I hope to hear from you soon. Take care. Bye.